all uh, welcome. Uh, uh, I hope uh, I can do this job uh, quite easy because it's not not so easy to uh, give a presentation after lunch. So it will be my 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 uh, uh, obvious task uh, to keep you awake. But from the other hand, I expect something from you, and that is to stay awake. And therefore, I have a a, a task for you. Well, um, in fact, this presentation I give. Uh, in two roles. This is, so it's a monologue, but I play two, two roles. I have a role of a statistician and I have a role of a business analyst. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, I hope that you will be able to determine when I switch roles in this presentation. <laughs> so you have to be aware. Okay. Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm working at Statistics Netherlands. Uh, for the people uh, who uh, are from the Netherlands, they might be uh, more aware of the uh, abbreviation CBS, Central Bureau on the Statistic. Uh, but CBS is an international uh, uh, term that uh, has another meaning, so uh, we, we switched uh, internationally to Statistics Netherlands. We got uh, uh, in contact with the process mining uh, in the, the last part of the previous year. Um, and uh, from there on, we, uh, we, we, we made a plan to do some uh, proof of concepting on what process mining can be for our business. Um, we, uh, uh, we planned to, 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 to see whether process mining uh, can uh, deal uh, with some aspects of our process. Well, we uh, identified two or three areas where we would like to uh, look at process mining. And when we uh, did so, that's what we did uh, this half year, uh, we identified even more areas on the way. So it's very nice to see how this is developing in, into our office. Okay, well, uh, I mentioned uh, official statistics, so I have uh, the opportunity to wait for my sheet. Oh, now we have a empty <laughs> sheet. I don't know what happened, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I it didn't work. That's no problem. Uh, we, we did test it, but I, in this sheet I had a graph of all, all kinds of statistics. I'll just have to explain it uh, by, by word. And, um, well, in fact, we make official statistics. It, it means that we have the term official in, the, in it, and official means that we have a legal obligation to produce statistics. So there are laws that describe what statistics we should produce. And these laws, they are uh, set up because of uh, the fact that there are information needs official information needs uh, at a national or at an, even at an international level. Uh, especially for the European Union, we produce a lot of statistics and they are all very much prescribed in details. Uh, almost 90% of our production is based on these uh, legal uh, obligations. This makes our business rather um, not flexible because, okay, this, these are the obligations and we have to do it. And the 10% I didn't mention, well, that's the 10% that we use to look for more flexibility, for more better products uh, in the market. Um, official statistics are statistics about a lot of things in our society, in, in our economy. And you can think about things, as figures about persons, about households, about addresses, about enterprises, about streets, about, about vehicles, uh, you, you name it and we, we make it, as we speak. As we speak. Uh, a lot of different topics, so we have also a lot of different sources that we need for uh, making these statistics. Most of the time we use information that's already available uh, in other ministries in, in, in the Netherlands or in the European Union. Uh, and of course that's information that we can easily uh, acquire. But if this information is not sufficient or if we, if we would like to do, uh, we, we have to do some, some more, uh, uh, create some more information on other topics, then we have to collect this information ourselves. Well, statistics themselves, uh, well, in fact, there are three main components into this statistics. And uh, that's the, this, these are the components, size, structure, and dynamics. We, we try to present things about the size, how many uh, and how much of things are uh, uh, available in the Netherlands. We try to compose them into uh, different parts, the structure, and of course, we would like to, uh, to show the development of these statistics. And especially on the area of the, the dynamics is an, is an interesting matching field with uh, process mining. Uh, therefore, I'll give you some more explanation on how we produce statistics on dynamics. There are basically there are three main uh, methods, main designs to produce uh, uh, dynamical statistics. 
and this is not uh, this is not the way that we are that, that we are used to dealing it with process mining. But it is possible to make uh, several pictures of the same situation of uh, different types. So if you uh, if you have a, a, a shopping street here is is Kalverstraat in Amsterdam, and you make this picture in one one moment and you make make the same picture in another moment, you get different differences, different people, different people walking in the street, different, different people shopping in the street. And you can of course describe how many people are shopping in the street uh, on one moment and on the other moment and you can compare these two. Then you have some interpretation of dynamics, but it's only a dynamic or concerning the, the, the differences between totals or subtotals, not about individuals. What, what happens to individuals, that, the, the one individual that, uh, that was shopping in, in one picture and, and not shopping in the other picture, you don't know. So this is this delivers information about dynamics, but it's only deliver, deliver information on a high aggregation level. The second approach, uh, this seems to be a holiday picture, but I've never been in the Serengeti uh, uh, desert. Uh, another approach is this one, that you try to follow a herd, uh, a group of, of cases, a herd of GNUs in this case, and you try to establish some statistics on how uh, is their, their traveling complex over the territory, for example. So in this case, you try to follow the herd and you even try to follow individuals in the herd, the individual canoes. And this concept is, is, is what we call um, uh, panel survey. I'm just looking for the, for the English uh, word. A panel survey. And, uh, well, in fact, the herd of blues is, is our panel in this case. You can do uh, this concept, you can, you can, you can uh, put this concept onto various other uh, principles in our society. And uh, in the uh, example I will present you later on, I will also present you on our uh, uh, panel. Well, as you see here, the, the GNUs, uh, they, uh, they, they travel across the country. And in order to be able to uh, get this, this, this nice process map of the traveling of the GNUs, you have to watch the GNUs for a certain period. And well, as you see, or maybe you see here, that uh, the, the period of cycling is only it's almost uh, one year, or exactly one year. So you have to be able to observe uh, the GNUs, the herd of the GNUs, for about one year. Um, this is a special way of observing uh, uh, this panel, and uh, well, for example, when you want to, to know some more about the lifetime of the GNUs, one year will be not enough. So it, is, it has a, a lot to do with uh, things you would like to describe in your statistics. A special way of uh, a panel survey is a cohort survey. In this picture, I present, I think, uh, the, the class of uh, 95 or so. And this is a class, it is, it is in fact, it's also a panel, but you define the, the panel on one moment in time. So there will be no refreshment of this panel, it will, it will only be these units that you can follow over uh, several years. And, and you are, are very much interested in how their career will de uh, develop. So this is a special type of, uh, of uh, panel survey, I mean, it cohort survey. Um, <coughs> then, of course, when we, uh, when we would like to produce a statistic, then we have to do the process to produce statistics. And, well, in general, at a high level, we have a very simple process. Uh, you see this execution bar, and, and, uh, and there it describes that, of course, we have, to do, we have to collect data, we have to analyze these data, and we have to publicate the data. Uh, that's, that's true for all statistics that we make. But when you look at an individual statistic, it can be very much uh, differentiated. How to collect the data, how to analyze the data, and how to public, uh, public how to do the publication of the data. So you need some uh, design of every statistic, and uh, especially when you have a, a big statistics, and it can be very important to have a good design to see how efficient you can produce the information that you have to make. Um, there is. Uh, of course, a damming dam type of cycle in, the, in this process, and every time that we uh, will, will be able to, uh, to uh, 
to improve our process, then of course we would like to apply this principle. And in this damming cycle, you see that process mining can be very helpful. Well, let's uh, switch uh, to an example of uh, asset history. I uh, took the example of the labor force survey. This is a very important statistic in our office. A lot of uh, uh, political consequences depend on uh, our results and of course uh, our task is to get uh, an objective, uh, a, good, uh, a good statistic out of the labor force survey. It describes the market, the labor market, and it, it, it describes how persons attend this labor market. Is, is someone looking for a job? Is someone having a job? Is someone not looking for a job and not having a job? And so on. What kind of persons are these? What is their uh, what is their uh, their age, what is their race, what is their nationality, and so on and so on. And of course you can also look at the jobs, what kind of jobs they are looking for, what kind of jobs they are uh, they're working in, uh, what, where are the enterprises uh, they are working in, what, what is their activity, and so on. But this is a very uh, statistic that, that is very important for our business. Um, in our case we do this with a panel. Survey. So we, we describe a panel, we, 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 we identify the group of cases, and cases in our case are addresses in the Netherlands. So we pick some of the addresses in the Netherlands, and these addresses we try to follow over time, and uh, then we try to get some information about how the labor market is, is occupied. This is not only this panel that's important, of course we have a lot of uh, information available in the Netherlands already, so we have our population register, we have a register of social security, we have a pension register. And of course we use these registers beforehand and, and, and also uh, during this process. But if we need some more information then we have to establish a direct survey. And this is the direct survey that we do in this panel. Uh, so every month the panel will be uh, uh, refreshed with 6,000 new addresses. These uh, addresses are uh, selected randomly, so this is a sample uh, selection. And, uh, well, in fact, uh, if you look at uh, the total number of addresses in the Netherlands, this 6,000 is, uh, is, uh, is less than 0.1% of the total addresses. But it's enough, we think, for us to produce uh, good statistics. Um, but, of course, this also depends on the quality that we get from uh, the, our direct survey. If we don't get uh, the information from this panel, enough information from this panel, then our, uh, our information will not be of enough value and our statistics will be, uh, uh, the quality of the statistics will be hard. I have to look at the time. Okay. Um, well, uh, in order to collect these data, uh, we use uh, three channels. Uh, one is the internet channel, so we have uh, an internet or web interview uh, uh, form. Uh, that's our preferred channel because it's uh, very cheap. Uh, we, we don't have to pay a lot uh, to do this and uh, it's, it's, I think it's a good way to have uh, fast, uh, fast uh, information collection. Um, if, the, if people do, are not responding on the internet, then we try to uh, reach them by telephone, telephoning, interviewing, or even face-to-face -face, uh, by people visiting uh, the respondents at the house. Of course, this telephonic interviewing and this face-to-face uh, -face interviewing is much uh, less cheap, so it's very expensive, in, in fact, and we try to, uh, to uh, diminish this uh, as much as possible. But sometimes it's necessary. Now, well, now I'm, I'm focusing on um, the first poll. As I told you, this is a panel, a panel of addresses, and this panel of addresses is followed over a period of five, uh, we, we follow them five times uh, in, during a period of one year, so with an interval of a quarter every, uh, between every poll. And this concerns the first poll, so we, we, we would like to get in contact with them first. And, uh, well, they didn't respond uh, with the internet, so we had to try to make uh, a connection by telephone. Our telephone channel is, uh, is, is uh, concerned here, and our main aim is to get as much of uh, responses as possible. That's what this lady is doing. She collects, uh, she collects the responses. And, of course, the, the responses should be uh, representative, so we should make should, should we should still be able to make a good statistics out of it. Well, what's 
What's the plan then? The plan is to make a, a, a calling strategy. How, how to do this, how, to, how can we get as much of a responses as we would like to have? Uh, well, that there we, could, we have a calling strategy, and this calling strategy has uh, two, two sides. In fact, uh, well, one side is we have a default calling strategy, uh, and, and this means if someone does not answer the first time, then we'll, of course we'll try a second time, but this try should be on another time of the day, or on another day, so we should spread our, our tries as much as possible <coughs> over the time, so we have the biggest chance of getting in contact with the respondents. Um, it's also possible that uh, a call delivers us uh, the response that uh, the person is busy, signal that, that, that the phone is busy. Well, when it's, uh, there is a busy signal, then of course the, we, we have to try again, or we would like to try again, say 10, ten minutes later. Uh, maybe then the, the line is not busy anymore. That's one uh, part of the strategy. The other part is uh, the, the appointment strategy. It might be uh, the situation that we get contact, but that the respondent is not willing to answer the questionnaire at that moment, and that we make uh, an appointment to answer it uh, later on. So, of course, when, when, we, uh, when we establish uh, this appointment, then we should handle it, and uh, at the moment that this time is uh, really effective. And that's... Uh, the second part of our plan, uh, the, the handling of appointment has a priority, so every appointment has to be dealt with first. Well, now we have a problem, and that's uh, where, uh, uh, where, of course, uh, at Statistics Netherlands, uh, we, we are not happy with, with these, these kinds of problems. We have a problem of the declining of the response rates. You see this red line? The red, uh, red line uh, describes the response rate of uh, the telephonic interview for the first poll, and it declines by 6%. And that's very, uh, very large in our, in our business. So it, it, it can uh, harm uh, the quality of our statistic very much, and it can also imply that we have to do much more effort to get, uh, to get all the, uh, the responses that we need. So it, uh, there will be more costs about this. Well, in that case, we establish a task force, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, I get a role in, in, in analyzing what happens here. Well, the main cause we think for this is the quality of our telephone numbers. Uh, we get the telephone numbers from an external provider, and this external provider, well, okay, uh, it, it might be a problem for, for, for him or her to, to uh, get the right telephone numbers for us. There is a lot of turbulence in the telephone number market at the moment, and we can uh, it can, it can very well be possible that this causes our, uh, this effect, our, our response uh, decline. Uh, but this is, not, this is not a cause that we could analyze immediately. We have to, uh, we, we need some more information to do this. In the task force, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we concentrated on, uh, on other causes that might be of influence. And, uh, well, that's what we also supported with uh, this process in mind. Well, one of the ideas was uh, maybe it's, uh, it's because of the contribution of mobile phone numbers. Uh, that's what, what one of the staff members said. We, we use a lot of mobile phone numbers and they are bad and they, they are the cause of everything. Well, it's very easy when you use process mining to see how these response rates develop uh, 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 for the cases with mobile numbers and for the cases with landline numbers. Well, this green line is the mobile numbers and the, uh, the purple line yeah, and mail so on. Only have 16 colors. Uh, the, the 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 purple line is uh, the response rate for uh, for landline numbers. And um, well, when you see uh, this graph, then you can visually already see that. Okay, also for the landline numbers, the decline is 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 there. So there is there is a difference between mobile numbers and landline numbers, but this difference is not declaring the decline. Another idea was to uh, see, well, okay, maybe we, uh, we end with a lot of uh, non-contacts, uh, respondents that we could not contact. Uh, what happens to them? Did we, did we uh, apply our, our strategy uh, uh, on, these, on these cases? Well, in that case, uh, we, uh, we, we, we made this uh, process map, and this is a process map where the activities are the parts of the day that we called uh, our, uh, our addresses our uh, cases. Three is in the evening, one is in the morning, and two is in the afternoon. So it's a very simple process map. 
But here you see that all 1820 cases, they all go through all these uh, activities. So uh, at least at this level you see that uh, the, the, there is enough spread over the, over the day in, in, uh, in, in times where we try to, uh, to phone these uh, respondents. Um, you can also see that uh, uh, there are 1710 starting at uh, uh, the evening. And this is one part of our, uh, our strategy I didn't tell you. Um, well, it, it, it gives the, the best chance to get a response when you start in the evening because then you get the best chance to get in contact with respondents. Well, they should all start in the evening, but you see here that it, it does not. Uh, about uh, 110 cases, they don't start in the evening. And, uh, well, that's, uh, that's a reason to look at, uh, at, at this problem any further. Uh, well, it, it seems to be uh, caused by the fact that our appointment strategy is dominant, so they, there was no time to, to, to make this phone call starting in the evening. Um, but from the other hand, it did, it did not declare our, our problem, so it is not, this is not a cause for the decline in our response rate. <laughs> At least we can, uh, we can uh, uh, put another uh, possible cause uh, aside. You see this, uh, this circling uh, uh, loops, uh, when you come back to the statement, uh, those are mainly the loops that are caused with uh, busy telephone calls. So if it's just busy, then 10 minutes later we try again. Well, uh, finally, uh, I mentioned it already, we, 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 we investigated the possibility that uh, maybe all our capacity was uh, spent with uh, uh, dealing with appointments. And uh, well, then we could uh, use also we could use uh, the process mining functionality to uh, see how much uh, effort is, is is paid on on dealing with uh, with handling of appointments and how much effort is paid with uh, the handling of the telephone interviewing in total. Well, here you see at a very high aver uh, uh, average level uh, that there is no difference, no, no remarkable difference between the daytimes. Uh, about 34% uh, of our efforts is, is going to dealing uh, handling with appointments, and it's quite equally uh, uh, divided between the day parts. When you look at more detail than than you indeed, you can define some you can find some days or some uh, some sometimes that uh, are really dominated by appointments, but they are very scarce. So finally. I did not have a sign from you. <laughs> Finally, uh, I have some summary. Um, well, in, in our case, uh, process mining helps uh, in this task force. We, uh, we were able to uh, contrib contribute to this task force uh, uh, within uh, several days. So it, it does not take a lot of time to, uh, to do this uh, analysis. And I think it was not possible to have the same conclusions in the same time with other uh, uh, means. Of course, uh, we are very uh, experienced in uh, doing uh, statistical an analysis in the statistics Netherlands. But when we may use, for example, SPSS or R or something like that, then it takes uh, more time to have the same results. We, it was possible for us to identify uh, possible causes uh, for this, uh, this problem. Of course, we did not, uh, unfortunately, we did not uh, have to find the exact solution, but we, we were able to uh, diminish uh, the, the field of. Uh, of problems. Um, we had a good testability of courses, so uh, this, this delivers us a lot of information to uh, get a real statistical hypothesis uh, testing, and of course uh, then we can, we can have a, a, a significant way of, uh, of dealing with uh, whether or not a course is relevant. And we don't need scripting, and this is very important uh, for the same reason as was told this morning. Uh, a lot of people um, that are bothered with this, this kind of task force uh, activities are, uh, uh, are not acquainted with uh, scripting uh, in, in SPSS or R, and it's important that they can, uh, you can use uh, this tool. Um, then, of course, uh, doing this way, uh, we, uh, we find uh, that uh, we, had, we had a lot of uh, needs for filters. We did a lot with filtering in, uh, in, uh, in, in DISCO, and some, uh, some aspects were not, we were not able to filter, so that's why uh, we uh, asked uh, Anna uh, to, uh, to look at it, if it's, if it's possible, 
to expand uh, the, the usability of filters uh, more, uh, especially when you look at uh, uh, some more complicated sequences of paths in, the, in, in our process. Um, and we need some post-processing, for example, when you, when you like to make these graphs, then you use the output from DISCO, and you combine them, several outputs together and make one picture or something of a graph of it. And uh, that's, that's necessary, and I think it won't be the task of DISCO itself, but it's, it's, it's extra work that we have to do. That's what my main contribution is. Uh, yeah, okay. We have no time anymore. I think we should postpone the questions for the next coffee break. Yeah. Uh, so we will have, um, let's take Johan.